Pull. Pull. All right, guys, Murph's here. And today we're going to talk about this a Stoger Condor Field 12 gauge over under shotgun. Now, in order to talk about this, we're going to talk about a little bit of context and some history, but not in the way that I normally do. So, as far as context is concerned, Stoger is owned by Benelli, who is owned by Beretta. And as is typical of Italian manufacturers, that's more or less arranging things in tiers. And Stoger is most definitely the budget end of that tier. Now, that's more or less the context I have because this shotgun is not exactly historic or anything along those lines. However, I do have a fair bit of history with this because this was my waterfowl shotgun when I was a kid. So I have like 15, 16 years of experience with this shotgun. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this shotgun specifically. So starting off at the front here, we have a single bead installed at the end of the barrels, which is my preferred for wing type shooting. I prefer to just be front sight focused whenever I'm doing that type of stuff. Now we do have interchangeable choke tubes in this shotgun. Now this shotgun is made in 12, 20, 28 gauge and 410 bore. The only ones of this series that have interchangeable choke tubes are the 12 and the 20 gauge. Now, originally this shotgun was shipped with three choke tubes, uh, improved cylinder, modified, and full. When I got a hold of this shotgun, it came with two modified choke tubes and an improved cylinder. So since then I have added a full choke to the repertoire. Now, this is a 26 inch barreled shotgun. You'll see that we have a ventilated rib going across the top of the top barrel. Uh, which is fantastic for helping uh, break up heat distortion and allowing more airflow across the barrel so that it cools down faster. You'll also note that this is serrated across the top, which helps break up glare from sunlight. Now, coming back to our four stock here, you'll see that we have some finger grooves cut out so that you can pull the gun more securely into your shoulder. There's also some press checkering on the grip, and the wood is of a fairly decent quality actually for a budget shotgun much better quality than what you most commonly see in like Mossbergs or something along that line now you look here this is our takedown lever which normally in break action double barrel shotguns this is some sort of hinge lever instead Stoger went with a half moon design on this particular gun now I don't normally indulge in disassembly for reviews, but this is so simple to do that there's really not a reason to not, there's really not a reason to not do it. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, we can see here that it breaks down into pretty much three components. Now, this is a three inch chamber, and you can see that we have some jeweling around our locking lugs here. Now, locking lugs are kind of the, the main emphasis that gets discussed whenever we talk about quality in over-under shotguns. The whole idea here is that you're supposed to have the lowest profile setup that you can because you have stacked barrels and that's gonna give you a higher height over bore, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So, a measure of high quality is to have the lowest possible locking block that you can. And a lot of your high-grade shotguns go to great lengths to design a lower locking system. However, I have to say that Stoger in this case is not necessarily indicative of that practice. They went for a very stout but very tall system because it's a lot easier and faster and cheaper to machine. So that's why we have the system that we have here right now. Now, reassembly is not terribly difficult of course, but This is what everyone talks about when they say that it's easy to maintain over under shotguns. Now, you'll notice that on the side of our receiver, we have some fairly simple scroll work going on here. And on this side as well, with some kind of more roughly 
stamped manufacturer's markings as well. Now, this is not a lot of the fancy type engraving that you'll see on your more expensive shotguns. This was purely added because, well, you got a lot of space here that you could do something with and it will make the average purchaser feel a little bit better about their shotgun, like they have a little bit of time and effort put into making it look fancy. However, to be honest, this is not a gun that's meant to be fancy. This is meant to be a tool and it does an excellent job of doing that. So there's nothing wrong with being an exceedingly good tool. Anyway. Here we have our lever for the hinge action, which pretty much does exactly what it's supposed to do on like any other brake action shotgun. Now this model comes with extractors, not ejectors, not unexpected for its cost. And our safety is located on the tang and it is just a safety, it's not also a barrel selector. It is aggressive stipling and it also has a raised center piece here so that you can press it forward and pull it back. The safety also does function whenever the action is broken open so you have to remember to turn the safety off whenever you go to shoot it after having reloaded. Now this shotgun does fire the bottom barrel first as usual with over under shotguns and this works off of an inertial firing system not a mechanical firing system. Now let me explain that a little bit further. So. We come up and we fire our first shot. Single trigger, so obviously this trigger is what is going to send our second shot home. However, there is no click. That is because the inertial system did not receive any recoil in order to function properly. So, in order to get this gun to function, you have to give it something to work against. And barrel goes. Now, let me explain that a little bit further. So off of the trigger, there is a little arm that sticks up and this arm acts against the sear that releases the hammer for each barrel. And there are two sears, two hammers, two barrels. So when that arm gets acted upon by the trigger and it sends that first shot home, the inertial force of recoil moves that arm over to the next sear so that it can send the next shot home. If that force does not get applied, that inertial arm cannot move and it cannot fire the second barrel. We're gonna talk about that more as to whether or not that's a benefit here before we're done. Now, you'll also see that our stock has a pistol grip or semi-pistol grip type setup, which is my preferred. It's nice for pulling it into the shoulder and our same press checkering from before. Really, in this lighting, that stock does look very nice. I really do appreciate this wood. It's actually fairly decent wood. Now, we'll notice here that we do not have the standard rubber buttstock that this should come with, and I'll tell you why. So, when I was a much younger man and we were uh, past shooting geese with this gun, we would be wearing multiple layers of clothing because, of course, it was winter. And for myself and the rest of the family, every time we tried to bring this gun up to the shoulder, the grabby rubber buttstock would grab a hold of our clothing in our armpit and we would have to add a whole extra step to get the gun unstuck and into the shoulder to be able to start shooting at some geese. So my dad finally decided that he would remove that butt, that butt pad and he would have a friend fashion this stainless steel butt plate to go onto the shotgun. And that's what we've used on this ever since. So from a recoil aspect, in heavy clothing, I don't really notice it. However, I will say that on heavier loads, this kind of hurts, but not enough so that I've ever taken it off. If anything, I leave it on for kind of a nostalgia aspect, if I'm being completely honest. And it does, I mean, it, it shortens the length of pull pretty drastically, but it really does make it handle nice and quick into the arm, and it doesn't grab as much on my way to the shoulder. Now, how does it shoot? Oh. Oh.
Oh. Well, guys, for the most part, the shotgun just functions, but it was not always that way. When I was, hmm, sounds like the cat's hungry. All right, when I was much younger and my dad first bought this in the early 2000s, we had a bunch of issues with it. And it actually wound up going back and forth to, it's very distracting. We wound up going back and forth to Stoger multiple times, way more times than I myself would actually have patience for. Pretty much after the first time it came back and it wasn't fixed, I probably would have sold the gun and just been done with it. However, Dad stuck with it, and ultimately this would be a case where he was right because this has been a fantastic shotgun ever since then. Now, a lot of the issue that it was having was that it was not switching over to the second barrel. In addition to that, this can be a bit of a stiff shotgun. It has broken in nicely over the years, but at, especially when you're, you crack it open after having fired your rounds and you're working to cock the hammers, it can still be a little heavier than you might expect. All right, so what do I use this for? Well, guys, I would pretty much use this for sports shooting at this point. I use it to break clays quite a bit. If I went back to upland bird hunting, this is probably what I would carry. And I would have no problem using this on ducks or geese today. Now, when it comes to my use, I have put, myself and my family for that matter, have put thousands of rounds through this gun. I would, I would conservatively estimate about 3,000 rounds, and that is low brass target loads, high brass hunting loads, and three inch, uh, duck shells. So it has had the full gambit of ammunition put through this gun and it has performed well ever since we got those initial growing pains worked out. Now what do I recommend you guys use this for? Well, as a sporting gun, this would be a pretty good deal. So these run between about $400 and $500 and if you're talking about a gun that you're going to take out in the field and you're going to use hard and abuse and expect it to last, I would recommend this shotgun, 100%. Now, if you wanted to take this on the competition circuit, I would say that you probably want to manage your expectations a little bit here. Now, I am not a competitive shotgun shooter, so I can't necessarily speak to what are the qualities of a shotgun that makes it good or bad for competitive type shooting. But what I would say overall, just taking a quick glance at a lot of competitive shotguns out there, is that this gun does not exhibit a lot of the key features. So, does that mean you could that you would not have fun if you took this to a competition? Well, it depends on your definition of fun. I would not necessarily expect to win a lot of competitions with this shotgun, but I would expect to have an absolute blast trying to. So, kind of kind of just manage your expectations a little bit on that one, but this thing would be just fine if your goal was just to be able to show up and send some shells down range. This will definitely meet that requirement. Now, I have heard about some guys using uh, over-under shotguns for turkey guns, and that being so that they can have two different distances represented by their choke tubes, and then if they want to take a close shot versus a long shot, they can designate between the two barrels. This shotgun is not a good choice for that because you don't have a barrel selector, so I would not recommend that. Now for home defense, I would not recommend this shotgun, and I'll explain why. Now from a simplicity aspect, it's very hard to turn this shotgun down, especially if you're talking about a family member who's not very firearms interested or savvy, but you still want them to be able to defend themselves if they have to. This would be very easy to teach somebody how to use, to take them out to the range and get them oriented to it. There's not a lot of moving parts. It's very, very simple. However, sometimes things are so simple that they're complicated. This might be an example of simple complication. And it's specifically around that inertial system. So if you were to use this in a self-defense situation and you came up on a target and you pulled the trigger and had a click no bang, you would not have a second shot right behind it. You would not be able to switch to another barrel in order to try to get that other shot off. You would have to tap this thing on the ground or hinge it open 
something in order to be able to get this weapon back into the fight. And that's not what you generally expect to have happen with double barrel guns. You expect that you're going to have that second shot right there to either follow up the first shot or to, to fix the fact that there wasn't a first shot. You don't have this in the shotgun. Now, the likelihood of a click and no bang. Not very high. Uh, center fire cartridges are already far more reliable than rim fire cartridges and shotgun cartridges are fairly reliable shotgun cartridges to begin with. But my issue here is that it's a compounding problem in a simple shotgun like this. So in any other weapon system, a click no bang wouldn't be that big of a deal. You'd rack that round out of the chamber and, and get right back to business. But in this shotgun, in this firearm specifically, a click no bang could be quite disastrous. That the problem that it creates just builds on itself and I don't think that's a very good solution to a self-defense type issue. If this is all you can get, then fantastic. Go with it, you're not gonna regret it, hopefully. But if you have an opportunity to pick something else over this, I would go with that option, personally. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much what I have for this shotgun. Uh, so, have a good day. Oh.